Hey, yeah, Cryptozins. Tonight's show, Celsius pursued by regulators, UK walks back unhosted wallet regs, Solend reverses decision to control whale account, and Crypto Job Watch. It's 10 p.m. Pacific. The date is June 20th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. Together, we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. Take a minute, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now because we're here at 10 p.m. every night so that when you leave in the morning, you're taking with you the crypto news analysis that you need to start your day. Keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. Celsius said, quote, we are taking this action today to put Celsius in a better position to honor, over time, its withdrawal obligations. That's how it started out for most people. Most people had no idea Celsius was even in trouble. Now, some wise souls were whispering warnings, but those warnings went largely unheard. They went largely unheard because people didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear their 18% interest investment was in jeopardy. They didn't want to hear that their funds could get locked up. Maybe jeopardized just as much as the Celsius network itself was jeopardized. And regulators want to know just what the hell happened. Five states worth of regulators, in fact. Now, these guys have started a probe into Celsius. The the regulators have a problem. They know Celsius, big, powerful lender in the digital currency space. And they know that Celsius halted withdrawals and asset swaps. What they don't know is why. Now, they do know what Celsius is claiming. They're claiming it was to protect investors. They put up a blog post and called it, quote, a very important message for our community. And it was in that blog post that they said, we are taking this action today to put Celsius in a better position to honor over time its withdrawal obligations. That didn't go over well. In a deep polar bear frozen crypto winter, you don't have room to make these kinds of mistakes. So when a lending company freezes withdrawals to conserve capital to save their own skin, that's bearish. The market recoiled. People figured out Celsius had been borrowing money to fund customer withdrawals. So that caused their token sell to plunge some like 70%. Well, regulators aren't so sure that Celsius was actually looking after their customer concerns. Joseph Rotunda is the enforcement director at the state, Texas State Securities Board. Now, he was speaking to Reuters when he revealed regulators had been meeting early last week to talk about Celsius and whether there was any cause for them to get involved. Well, apparently, they found out just like we did. Rotunda said that his team found out about the situation and Celsius's decision to freeze user withdrawals from Twitter and the company blog. And that caused him some degree of concern. He said, quote, I am very concerned that clients, including many retail investors, may need to immediately access their assets, yet are unable to withdraw from their accounts. The inability to access their investment may result in significant financial consequences. And it's not just Texas either. Joseph Borg is the Alabama Securities Commission director, and he confirmed the probe. He said he's been working with others to look into Celsius and their actions. According to him, Celsius has been compliant and responsive to regulators' questions, and these questions are coming from regulators in Texas and Alabama, as well as Washington, Kentucky, and New Jersey. In the meantime, Celsius is working hard to reduce their liquidation price. They just paid off a huge chunk of debt to Compound. They repaid a $10 million loan from Compound, They also paid off a $53.6 million debt to Oasis Protocol. Both Compound and Oasis are yield-bearing DeFi platforms. But the fact is, Celsius is going to need a lot of these repayments because their cash flow is going in the wrong direction. For the week of May 6th, Celsius had $397 million of cash coming in which sounds great until you find out that for the same time period, over a billion dollars went out. Unless you think that things are getting better for sell, the Celsius token don't. Because while the price is rising, 
it's from an organized effort on social media. They're trying to get together a short squeeze to drive up the prices and maybe provide some exit liquidity. Don't take the bait. Not financial advice. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $908.32 billion. It's up 3.22% in 24. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up 4.1%, Ethereum up 4.51%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin up 5.8%. The Treasury of the UK has decided to walk back reporting requirements for crypto companies. These companies were supposed to collect the personal information of people self-custodying their own crypto. And so this was in their June report. And it really stuck a blow against the narrative that crypto and specifically unhosted wallets are just for criminals. They said, quote, many persons who hold crypto assets for legitimate purposes use unhosted wallets. Further, they said that there is no good and clear evidence that shows unhosted wallets are being used disproportionately by criminals. So, in a move that walks back a very poor decision. They said that they are only expecting crypto companies to collect personal information for, quote, transactions identified as posing an elevated risk of illicit finance. I mean, I guess I could see that. They're saying if you get some money sent to your account from some sketchy source, they're going to want to ask you about it. They're going to want to know who sent you that sketchy money, which really doesn't work for me because anyone can send anyone else money. They just need to know the address. But that said, it's better than their first decision. Because the UK Treasury, they got it from all sides. They heard from regulators. They heard from industry leaders, academia, civil society. And they also worked with other government agencies on the subject of updating money laundering regs. And that's because previously, crypto transfers fell under the Financial Action Task Force standards. That meant both the sender and the receiver of crypto had to be fully outed. So, the measure was dropped because of a number of concerns. The foremost being privacy, but also feasibility and costs all figured into the decision. And so it came to pass that the UK Treasury reversed its decision, saying, quote, Instead of requiring the collection of beneficiary and originator information for all unhosted wallet transfers, Crypto asset businesses will only be expected to collect this information for transactions identified as posing an elevated risk of illicit finance. If these recommendations are approved by Parliament, then they'll be implemented in September of 2022. This is a welcome reversal because it seems like Europe just isn't all that into privacy. The European Union, they outlawed anonymous crypto transactions three months ago. Lithuania also They just banned anonymous wallets outright. Frankly, I'm not a big fan of these schemes that require citizens to spy on and report other citizens, especially if that means not doing so could get you fined or sent to jail. It's good to see the UK on the side of the angels for this one. The global NFT market cap is up over $12.26 billion. Sales volume is flat 0.06%. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are CryptoPunks, followed by Bored Apes, Other Deed, Mutant Apes, and Clonex. Now, keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. So, I saw that story about Soul End last night, and I thought about covering it then, but it didn't seem quite ready yet. Well, there's a lot more to the story now. And this could help end up being such an important story, it's important to get it right. This story has implications not just for Soul End, the company involved, but the entire Solana ecosystem is colored somewhat. Here's what's going on. Soul End is a Solana-based borrowing and lending service. One of their accounts is a whale. In fact, it's the largest account in the entire protocol. Well, not only do they have a large account, but they're also holding a, quote, extremely large margin position. And that extremely large margin position was getting dangerously, uncomfortably close to being liquidated. 
they were worried about this huge on-chain liquidation because you know what happens. You know how that affects the market. 3AC, they got liquidated. Huge amount of Bitcoin. And what happened? Bitcoin lost like $1,000 in price. One massive red candle on the five-minute chart, and it wasn't over. Bitcoin continued to dump another couple of thousand for its price. Now, Bitcoin is recovering from that liquidation, but people are worried because this whale has 5.7 million soul just sitting in a soul end account. That's 95% of the protocol's deposits. So they are the biggest pool provider by far. Well, they also have the biggest debt. They borrowed $108 million in stablecoins and then used their 5.7 million soul as collateral for the loan. This whale's account has a liquidation price of $22.30 per. At the time of writing, Sol is sitting at just north of $34. If that price falls below the $22.30 mark, they become liable for $20 million. And the whale won't take their calls. Sol N said, quote, Despite our efforts, we've been unable to get the whale to reduce their risk or even get in contact with them. With the way things are trending, with the whale's unresponsiveness, it's clear action must be taken to mitigate risk. So they took a step, an unprecedented step. They put forth a proposal for vote. The proposal asked for a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It said, quote, vote yes to enact special margin requirements for large whales that represent over 20% of the borrows and grant immediate power to Solin Labs to temporarily take over the whale's account so the liquidation can be executed over the counter. Vote no to do nothing. Solin's proposal was to change the rules of the game and take over an account that didn't belong to them. Well, 95% of the votes said yes to this proposal and just barely cleared the 1% quorum needed. And one voter was all it took to get over that hurdle. That's because you get to vote per token not per person. So one whale account can offset the votes of hundreds of people based on how many tokens they're hodling. 1,155,000 votes passed the proposal with over 1 million of those votes coming from a single account. This decision didn't stand. Huge outcry. Dylan LeClaire tweeted, quote, absolute comedy. Solen Protocol, a supposed decentralized lending protocol built on Solana, has voted to take over a whale's account with emergency powers to eliminate the chance of forced liquidation. Decentralized in name only. Fat Man Terra got involved too. He tweeted out, This is pretty wild. The Solen team wants to take over the whale's account and execute the liquidation themselves. The whale's position is so degenerate that if Sol drops too low, it will create cascading liquidations across the dex books and potentially bad debt. DeFi. One of the more impassioned responses came from a Twitter account called The People's Degen. They said, quote, Message to the Soul End Protocol devs. I'm begging you not to do this. I know you're scared. I know your VCs are pressuring you. I know some of your Soul End bag holders are pressuring you, but this is flat out wrong and you know that. Soul End caved. They put up another proposal to undo the previous proposal. They said, quote, We've been listening to your criticisms about sets NLD1 and the way it was conducted. The price of Sol has been steadily increasing, buying us some time to gather more feedback and consider alternatives. We're committed to protecting user funds, transparency, and doing what's right. And that's the right move. I get that they were scared, but their first proposal was just so short-sighted, knee-jerk, and wrong. So I'm continuing that new segment tonight. If you guys like it, I'll keep doing it. It's called Crypto Job Watch. And the idea came after me after doing story after story about this project or that exchange, laying off tens, hundreds, or thousands of people. I don't know these companies. I don't know work for any of them. I don't know anybody who works for any of these companies. I'm not endorsing a job or a company. I'm just offering a little help for someone who might need it. So this company's name is Polychain Capital. They're based in San Francisco, though the position is remote. It's for a research analyst. And while they didn't provide a salary, Indeed.com estimates 
$66.8 to $84.6 thousand dollars a year. This job was posted over 30 days ago. Basically, the job is to provide alpha for Polychain Capital. The job description says responsibilities include reasoning through emerging trends in the space and identifying non-obvious opportunities for deployment of capital, researching early stage investment opportunities in emergent companies and protocol, working with the investment team on due diligence of prospective investments, and willingness to travel as necessary. Just like the one last night, this job you have to go to the website to apply for. Fortunately, the web address is easy. Polychain.capital will get you there. And good luck if you decide to apply. And that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed tonight's show, like, comment, and subscribe. Give us a glowing review because that helps other people find their way to this podcast. Do you have questions or comments? Reach out and let us know. The email address is nick at cryptoovernighter.com. That's nick at cryptoovernighter.com. Or come find us on YouTube. Leave me a comment and maybe I'll read it into the next episode. You stay safe out there. You watch out for yourself. But watch out for each other too. We'll see you tomorrow night.